Today, let's go through a numerical example of what the difference between private goods and public goods implies about demand. So to very briefly recap, a private good is something that is rival and excludable. Rival means that if more people want to use the good or service, you need to produce more of it. Excludable means if people don't pay, you can keep them from getting access to the good or service to keep them from enjoying the benefits of whatever the good or service is. So classic example of a good that is a private good that's rival and excludable is a hamburger. Well, today we're talking about lamb burgers since we're talking about some Vikings, Lagatha, Bjorn, and Floki. Now, Public goods are the opposite, have the opposite characteristics of private goods. They're non-rival, meaning that as more people want to enjoy the benefits of the good or service, you don't need any more. And non-excludable means that it is difficult or impossible to keep people from getting access to this good or service if people don't pay. So our example of a public good is fireworks. Another common example would be public defense. So let's suppose we have a society with three people, Lagertha, Bjorn, and Floki. And let's suppose first that we're talking about hamburgers or lamb burgers. And for each of these three people in society, they have a demand curve. In other words, a willingness to pay, marginal willingness to pay curve. So Lagatha, this is her marginal willingness to pay a table here in the first column, the pink. Bjorn is in the green and Floki is in the yellow. So for example, Lagatha tells us that if the price was $10, she would buy zero. If the price was $9, she would buy zero. If the price was $8, she'd buy zero. If the price was $7, she'd buy zero. But if the price got down to $6, she would buy one. So that means that her maximum willingness to pay for the first lamb burger is $6. Bjorn is willing to pay $10 for his first lamb burger. Floki would be willing to pay only $9 for his first lamb burger. Now I've graphed these three demand curves down here. So green for Bjorn and yellow for Floki and pink for Lagatha. So you can see Lagatha's demand curve is the lowest, we might say, and yellow for Floki and green for Bjorn. So these are typical price quantity axis, price quantity, three demands. Now, we might want to look at the total demand. So here we have the total demand for lamb burgers. At each price, we might see what is the total quantity that is going to be demanded of this private good. All we want to do is look at each price, right? Or visually, we could look at the price on the demand graph here. We can look at the table. At a price of $10, Lagatha wants to buy none. Bjorn wants to buy one. Floki wants to buy zero. So at a price of 10, the total quantity demanded is going to be one because only Bjorn will want to buy and he will buy one. What if the price were $9? Well, at a price of nine, Lagatha doesn't want any, Bjorn wants two, and Floki wants one. So that would give us a total demand of three. Two for Bjorn, one for Floki. And I've got it graphing the total demand in purple down here as we go. What if the price was only $8? Well, the total demand for all three of these people in society, Lagatha zero, Bjorn three, Floki two, total would be five. Okay. So we see the total demand down here in purple. Uh, what if the price was seven? None for Lagatha, four for Bjorn, three for Floki, seven. At a price of six, one plus five plus four. So you, you get the idea here. If this is a private good, since it's rival, people, if they don't pay, you can keep them out. And it, we need more if there are more people each person is going to have to buy their own lamb burgers, basically, in this market. So we just add, we just basically sum these numbers for each quantity. And, and since this is, is Excel, I, we could just program this equals the sum of those three numbers.
at that price okay and then we can drag that down and that will continue to add those up and we can get an idea of what that total demand looks like for the three people in society now what if this was not a private good it's not a hamburger or a lamb burger what if it was something like fireworks where if people don't pay we cannot exclude them non-excludable and if more people want to enjoy the fireworks we don't need more right the more people that watch the fireworks does not diminish the enjoyableness or the, the satisfaction gained from people looking up in the sky and watching these fireworks so the tactic for answering this question is very different when we're talking about a public good what we imagine here is people want to pool their money together and cooperate or maybe this is a government organization or a community organization what we want to know is how many fireworks should we buy depending on the price of the fireworks so what we want to get is when we talk about the price here is the total willingness to pay right so let me edit that total WTP total willingness to pay for these fireworks okay now we can see that a little bit better so here's here's the technique here's the idea what if all three of these people said you know what if we bought one firework for us to shoot off and we all get to watch it what is the most we would be willing to pay for that one firework collectively because when you talk about public goods these are things that generally have to be bought collectively by the government or community organization who uh, either through cooperation which is a little hard sometimes or the government taxing people we want to know how many fireworks should we get based on how much these fireworks actually cost so the total willingness to pay for the first firework would be well Bjorn well let's, let's start with Lagertha here. Lagertha Lagertha would be willing to spend at most six dollars in order to see one firework so Lagatha says I'll, I'll kick in six dollars for one Bjorn how much would what's the most you'd be willing to pay to watch one firework go off Bjorn says oh, ten dollars I'd be willing to kick in ten at most and Floki says well to watch one firework the most I'd be willing to pay would be nine dollars okay well six plus ten plus nine is twenty five dollars let's put a dollar sign on that so that we explicitly or you know 25 euros 25 whatever 25 pounds so the most these three together would be willing to buy one that they can share and they don't have to have three different hamburgers right they can then watch one firework and each get enjoyment that's one of the key things about a public good so if they go and they look and they see that the price of a firework is thirty dollars they don't want to buy any you know they shouldn't buy any because their total enjoyment of the three isn't worth it but if they see that fireworks cost twenty dollars then certainly they should pool their money and buy one and then figure out how to split the cost okay that would be efficient now what about the second firework well Lagertha says well if we were you know two, one is great uh, two if I wanted to watch a second firework the most would be willing to pay would be five and Bjorn says nine and Floki says eight so nine plus eight is 17 17 plus five is 22 so the most they'd be willing to pay collectively is 22 dollars pounds euros to watch the second firework so they should be willing to buy the second firework as long as the cost is less than or equal to 22 dollars since this is their total willingness to pay to watch a second firework go off and so on so this is a little more difficult to do uh, than just adding up the quantity at each price that you would look at for a private good for a public good we want to look at the most they're willing to pay for each unit right so the third would be four plus eight plus seven so that would be nineteen dollars and for the fourth unit we would add three sorry three dollars from Lagatha that she would be willing to pay plus seven from Bjorn is ten plus six from Floki so three plus seven plus six sixteen dollars 
So you take a minute and see if you can fill out the rest of the table and I'll come back and we'll share and we'll see if we come up with the same answers for the remainder of these. So here's the rest of the table, except I left the last one blank here. And it's important to note that after the sixth unit here, Lagertha drops out. And she's not willing to pay anything for a seventh, so or the or an eighth or a ninth. So she just says, I'm I'm done. I'm not willing to contribute anything for a seventh of the eighth. It's just she doesn't like fireworks that much or doesn't have enough money to contribute anymore. Um, and then Floki. After the ninth, he's not willing to contribute any more money, and it's just Bjorn is willing to pay a dollar for the tenth, right? So that's this line here. And then the eleventh, we actually don't really have any data for the eleventh, the way this table is set up here. Bjorn, since we just go from a dollar to zero willingness to pay here, we don't have any information about what he'd be willing to pay for an 11th. Now, maybe if we asked him specifically, hey, Bjorn, we know if it was free, you'd be willing to, to watch 12 fireworks. But what about that 11th? What's the most you're willing to pay? We might have to ask him a special question since this table doesn't have it in there. So we could suppose that we asked Bjorn, since we know that Floki's not willing to pay anything for an 11th. Bjorn, would you be willing to pay 25 cents? or something for the 11th, and, and maybe he would say so, right? But we're not actually sure from looking at this table. We'd have to ask him to get that data. So this shows you how we need to think about the demand for private goods differently from how we look at the demand for public goods. So I hope this helps your understanding with how to address these two things differently. And as always, I wish you the best of luck with your studies.